Hey everyone, I'm going to be showing you how to level an alt 1 to 70 on Mop Remix. All you need to do is make a trial account on the Battle.net website under your main account, and it will track over any of the achievements that you had on the, your main account to your trial account. So starting out is pretty easy if you've already got a character going. All you need to do is accumulate some gems and tinker items, and you should be set. It'll eventually get easier and easier with each completion of a dungeon. You'll just gain more and more stats. You're going to want to pick up every item on the trial account because you can't receive any mail though. Here are my stats and gems and tinkers before we get into this. Now, why does this work? Well, because level scaling is absolutely broken and they did not think about trial accounts being capped at level 20. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it. You'll eventually get to the point where you can just solo the dungeon and almost one-shot all the bosses. You'll probably get to the point where you can one-shot all the bosses. Uh, here's a little tip for this boss, though. Uh, you can actually hit him with a range ability before going into the boss fight. So I build up some runic power before going in, and then just kill one of these guys. I used to have to kill two of, the, two of them before I started hitting the boss. And during my weaker stages, three of them before like attacking the boss, you'll have to get a feel for what, you know, is the best time for you to stop attacking the water elementals and just kill the boss. But I'm at the stage to where I can just kill one of these and just move on. Like, I'm just zooming. I got the speed tinker item. I got the rune forge for 10% haste. So my cooldowns are hella fast. You'll get mailed the items and experience, but here's a pro tip. You can actually grab the gold experience threads before you grab the experience themselves and activate those beforehand to get bonus XP on your boss kills before you actually do everything. So what you want to do is between a couple of runs, you know, like 10, 20 runs, uh, you're going to want to, you know, somewhat oftenly at least grab those XP charms from your bank and just go back in the dungeon, start grinding again, and you should be able to hit a character within two hours. That's what I've been able to do. Another pro tip with this room is I pull the mobs in the middle and do a lot of damage to them and then kite them all the way into this room back here and you're able to actually glitch the middle mob or the middle boss that spawns in this whole instance. You can get her to come in here. Uh, it does require some teamwork sometimes because you can get your team to like get her to spawn in here. I don't know exactly how it works. I don't have a 100% chance of like doing this. But I've done it quite often, and here's a clip of it happening. So you can have an idea of like somewhat how it works. But you do not want her to leave that wooden part where I'm standing on when you're fighting the boss. You gotta be very careful. You don't want to leave that wooden spot. Otherwise, you could despawn her, and that could cost you, you know, a couple seconds. But I start both these events at the same time, so I can do both these bosses at the exact same time, and then just go back to the main boss. And I'm pretty much done with the dungeon. Like, zooming. We done. Another thing with this instance is every time you kill one of the side bosses, you get a movement speed buff. That's why I pull all the mobs from the side and bring them all the way to the other side. That way I'm not losing any downtime. I start the damage on the middle mobs that spawn while I'm bringing them into the other room. I, I apply my blood boil to get my dots on everyone. Death and decay, all that try to get my two to three blood boils before I move on to that room where I kited them both into and then I just go back to the uh the main boss and we're, we're done that's it that's pretty much everything you need to know the rest of this video is just gonna be tips and me just running these dungeons on my uh trial account since there's only a few that you can do them on and it they only take two minutes like actually two minutes for me to do <laughs> on my on my DK. This shit is busted. I would take advantage of it while you can. I'm pretty sure this won't be rolled back. So just do it while you can. Save yourself 60 bucks, you know. And have a good day. For this part, you're going to be stuck in an animation. Uh, I don't know how to get out of it. But I activate a speed boost before I go in and click the target icon. And do a jump beforehand so I get extra distance too. It's the mid max there.
It is crazy how fast I can kill that guy now, though. Now, you do want to make sure you're picking up everything on the trial, because you cannot get mailed your stats that you're getting off these, so... It's worth it to just keep scaling. And then during that part, you can just jump. On that phase. I usually just pull all these in here. Pull up a little runic power so I can just throw a little death bolt. Dumpster this guy. Now, before this point though, I would kill the mobs, at least some of the uh, mobs before uh, going down and killing the boss because my character wasn't as strong, but it ramps really fast, trust me. In the beginning stage though, you, you can pull all those mobs and you'll probably have to wait on killing the boss for a second just to get some damage on those AoE mobs and space out the damage a little bit. And then those, I can just blood boil those now. It's crazy. I've always just gone straight to boss on this part though. If you kite them efficiently and do AoE, uh, you should be fine. You know, using your defensives properly. Like, you should be fine. But that's a good one. A good fast run. Do you, uh, dungeons on too. This one's another really fast dungeon. Also, probably one of the easiest ones. The scaling just goes harder on this one. I don't, I don't know why. Where, where the bosses are just easier. I don't know. What are those two? Another crazy thing is the Volpera Racial hits for, I'm not kidding you, not even, like, like 9k, 9.5k at this stage. It's crazy, man. 9.4k Racial ability. So that's actually a pretty big bonus to being a Volpera Death Knight. Another thing I forgot to mention is make sure these are heroic dungeons. You want to be spamming heroic dungeons. You can do heroic dungeons from level 10. Like, right when you start off the go, you should be able to just go in there. And right when you make a character too, you can invite that character to a party and instantly start doing dungeons with them on, uh, with that alt character on your main. You're not going to have the dungeon queuing option unlocked at level 10, right when you make the character, but your alt character will. So you can just pass it to your trial account and that character can just queue it up and you're good to go right when you start level 10. So make sure you're grabbing your threads, make sure you're grabbing your XP uh, kind of often because it's going to scale based on the XP or the level that you are. So that's how much XP you're going to get uh, per boss kill in the mail. So you want to make sure your threads are activated as soon as possible for the gold XP and you do want to make sure you're somewhat up to date so you're getting the most XP possible from these runs that you have your alt just AFKing in. Another pro tip on this one, if you ever feel like killing your teammates and being a dick, you can always throw down a death and decay on the bombs as you're going up the stairs to try and kill one of your teammates, and then LMAO them in chat, or hit them up with a question mark, and then continue your speedrunning.
normally on this part you would want to put down an aoe and go behind the pillar that's right in front of me here to get these mobs to all group up but i'm at a stage to where it doesn't matter anymore and my blood boil hits a good chunk of them so you know i'm kind of chilling now normally behind the pillar though uh throw death and decay on that part when it's spawning and then you just hide and wait a second get them all group up and that's a little bit easier bongos on this fight usually because this fight takes longer than most fights than like any of the other dungeons you do on the last part of this phase also don't forget to pop your scrolls and that's pretty much it uh hope you enjoyed the video like comment sub if it helped you out if you have any extra tips you want to add to give to someone else in the comment section below feel free to do that i'm live every day on twitch usually 10 hours a day uh that's pretty much it have a good night